Hey, what's up? It's Jared with State of Tech, and today I wanted to talk about five things that you can connect to your iPad Pro with iPad OS 13. Obviously, Apple made some major updates with iPad OS, not only giving it its own software now, calling it iPad OS, as opposed to it just being a different flavor of iOS, but there are devices that we can connect and different things that we can do on our iPad now that are pretty exciting, and I wanted to talk about that in a video. Now, last year I made a video about how to connect a hard drive to your iPad Pro. It's right now the number one video on my YouTube channel. And so that's obviously an important thing is being able to connect storage devices to our iPad. Our iPads are creative devices. We can edit photos and video and draw and do all sorts of things uh, as well as consume content like videos and music and whatnot. And a lot of that lives on other devices that we have. So if you wanna be able to connect a hard drive to your iPad, it's much easier to do that now. So the number one thing and probably the biggest thing that came to the iPad with this new version of software is the ability to connect a hard drive directly to your iPad. Now I use solid state drives, little solid state drives like this Samsung one here that allow me to store a lot of data on a small device and I can connect this directly to my iPad using a USB-C to USB-C cable. So I could plug a USB-C cable in here, plug it into my iPad, and use the Files app on my iPad to navigate what is on this drive. I can watch videos that are stored on this drive, stream music to my iPad, I can copy content over from the hard drive to my iPad, and I can also copy content from the iPad to the hard drive. It's a great option. So being able to connect directly to the drive now means faster transfer speeds and just an overall easier experience there in getting access to what is on that hard drive. Now, whether you are looking to purchase a hard drive or you already have a hard drive, any hard drive is gonna be able to connect to your iPad so long as you have the appropriate connector. The iPad has a USB Type-C connector, and not all of our hard drives might have that. If you have a hard drive that has perhaps micro USB or USB Type-B or something on it, uh, you're going to need some sort of an adapter to get it down to USB Type-C. So you may need what is the second item that you can connect, which you could always connect a hub such as this, which this hub has uh, USB type A connectors. It has SD card, micro SD card slot. It has another USB type C. It has an HDMI. So it has a lot of stuff going on. And even though you could use this prior to iPad 13 or iPad OS 13, this has more functionality now with iPad OS 13. Now, before, even if you had a hub like this, you, you couldn't plug hard drives into it. You couldn't plug uh, anything really as far as a media device into it other than putting an SD card in it to copy content from like your camera over to your iPad. Now, with iPad OS 13, you use this USB connector, USB Type-C connector, plug it into your iPad, you can plug in all of your USB Type-A devices, you can either use the USB Type-C connector here to plug in something else, or you can run power through this device to not only power your iPad, but also give it the additional ports and options. And this is just one of many uh, types of hubs that you can get for your iPad. This particular one is from Aki, and I really like it because it has the cable, so it's flexible. So I can set this down on the table and it can still be plugged into my iPad, uh, and it just makes it easier for connecting multiple devices to my iPad. So there's a lot more functionality for hubs like this here in 2019 with iPad OS 13 as well. Beyond hubs, obviously this is something that has been able to work even prior to iPad OS 13 and that is just SD card readers. I wanted to throw this one in because it is a USB type C connector and it is a hub because you could put an SD card or a micro SD card in here. And so I'm always carrying this because it makes it easy for me to copy content off of my various cameras into my iPad. The third device that you can connect to your iPad is this RavPower File Hub. Now this is something that allows you to expand functionality 
but wirelessly to your iPad. Uh, this is something that worked before. This is the main device that I talked about in that popular video that I put out last year, but this still has good functionality in 2019 because it allows you to do all of these things, but it allows you to do it wirelessly. So on this device, it has an SD card reader built into it, so you could put your SD card in here and wirelessly transfer content to your iPad. Not only that, but it also has ports on the back of it. So if I wanted to plug in uh, Ethernet internet into my iPad and remain wireless, I can plug that in here, connect to the internet from this device, and then this device shares the internet with my iPad. Excellent. I also have a USB Type-C connector here and a USB Type-A connector so that I can connect things like hard drives to my iPad wirelessly without having to have dangly wires hanging from my iPad, which means I can keep my iPad comfortably in my lap or in my hand while I'm being creative and I don't have stuff dangling off the side of it video editing apps, photo editing apps, and all of that stuff, most of them require you to have the content stored on your iPad. There will probably be updates soon to where you can add, access that content externally, but right now, the best thing to do as far as being wirelessly connected to your stuff uh, within the same room is using a device like this RAV Power File Hub, which also has its own internal battery that you can use to charge up other devices. So this really is a multifunction tool and it's super useful. I always have it in my bag with my iPad. Now, if the Apple Pencil isn't your thing and you still like to use a mouse, which sometimes I do, you can actually connect a Bluetooth mouse now to your iPad and do a lot with it. So let me show you the process of actually making this happen. The first thing we're gonna need to do is go in and make sure that our mouse is paired to our iPad. You simply go into the Bluetooth setting, put your mouse in pairing mode on this specific mouse, which is the MX Master 2S. You just simply choose from one of the three different settings for pairing and then press down on the button until it starts to flash. Once it starts to flash, it will then show up as an option in your iPad and you can tap and connect it. Now, after it's connected and it shows that it is connected, you're gonna need to swipe down to accessibility and under accessibility, go to touch. And then you're gonna need to go to assistive touch and turn on assistive touch. Now, there are some additional settings here like single tap, double tap, and long press. You can create new custom gestures. Um, and then under pointer devices, you can customize what your mouse keys do. So for example, you can make the mouse keys work by toggling them on and then also choosing what they're going to do. So when you right click or left click, you can customize those a little bit. Um, and then also you can go and just kind of set uh, whether it's going to show an on-screen keyboard because obviously if you're using an assistive device You might want an on-screen keyboard. I have the keyboard case on my iPad So I don't need that turned on And then I can have it always show the menu now the menu is showing up down in the bottom right hand corner Which you can barely see because I adjusted the opacity of it not to be distractive when I click on that, I can get access to all of these different items here. Now, if I don't want this, I can just turn that off completely. Um, I, if I'm using a mouse, essentially, I, I may need to uh, activate Siri in this way, which I can do. So you can see that Siri is now activated and I can turn Siri off. And then I can also go back home. I can go into Control Center and all this stuff because uh, they all still work, swiping down from the top right hand corner, like so, swiping down from the center, all those things work, so you don't necessarily have to have this feature enabled. Um, I just had it enabled really just because I like having those easily accessible. But I can go and turn off that menu, and then it's always going to be hidden when a pointing device is connected, and that typically is probably the best way to just go ahead and uh, and and keep that set up. So I really like having a mouse connected to the iPad. I think it's a really neat feature, a really neat way to interface with your iPad, and more apps will probably continue to add in functionality. Now, as long as a pointer device such as a mouse is connected to your iPad, you're gonna see that mouse on the screen. But when you power off the device 
and then the device is no longer connected, that goes away and that menu is over in the right hand side. And I have the opacity set low on that so it's not distractive. So it's there, it's accessible for me whenever I need it, but it's not a distraction. I definitely like using a mouse with my iPad though. So the fifth thing that you can do with your iPad is use it as an external display for your Mac. So this is something that is coming as an update to OS Catalina, which I believe is gonna launch anytime soon. We just had a recent update to Mac OS that seems to be preparing us for OS Catalina. And as soon as we're able to update our Mac to Mac OS Catalina and with iPad OS 13 on your iPad, you'll be able to use your iPad as an external display. The reason that this is neat is I can then edit photos uh, and see the preview on my iPad. I can be watching a movie on my iPad uh, that is from my computer. So maybe I just take a browser window that's got YouTube videos and drag them over to my iPad and I could still be working. It brings to me all of the cool things of having dual display without having to have a just display sitting there doing nothing most of the time. I could utilize my iPad for that, which is an excellent feature. I'll make sure to do a video on that completely showing the process. It's something that I've been able to play around with using the beta version of Catalina but I'm excited for it to be coming to the Mac and I'll be able to do this on any Mac that I have uh, at any time, which is a great feature. I'm going to be using my iPad at least two to three times as often uh, as a external display. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope that it helped you understand some of the things that you can do with your iPad, some of the things that you can connect to your iPad. Obviously, we jumped around quite a bit here. There are a lot of different things that you can connect to your iPad and for different purposes. Let me know what you think was your favorite down in the comment section below. Share with me what you connect to an iPad and what you would love to be able to connect to an iPad with, even if it's not yet supported. I love to see the different ways that you guys are using your technology, as well as being able to share the way that I use my technology with all of you. So let's use that comment section down below for that. I've also got links in the description to the different devices and things that I connect to my iPad. So make sure to check out those links if you're interested. But that's going to do it for today. Thanks so much for being here and I hope to see you back in the next one here on State of Tech. Take care.